Hello, hello everybody. This is Tiptop MTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we are doing another series in my series, Magic the Marveling. For those of you who don't know, Magic the Marveling is this giant series where I take every movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and turn it into a set of cards based around the characters, items, and events. Now, we've been going through the movie starting with Iron Man and we've made it to Infinity War. This was a big undertaking to do. I had to turn every character, item, and event into a magic card. And so today we are going to be looking at some of the best or the most important characters, items, and events in that movie. And we're going to talk about the cards I created for them. Now, Infinity War is a huge movie, so I can't talk about every card that I created for it, but I did create a bunch of cards that won't be in this video. So in the description, you'll find three links. One to a playlist with all the other videos, one to a website where you can find all of the cards and one to a website where you can find all of the infinity war cards specifically as well as a breakdown of the themes my favorite cards mechanics that are within all of the cards and yeah now you don't need to have seen the other videos to understand this one there are just a couple things now heroes the th there are new creature types three main ones that being hero avenger and villain now, to save space on the type line, I combined some of these together. So, for instance, if we were to take Thor, he would be a legendary creature, hero, avenger, god, as guardian noble. And that's way too many creature types to put on the type line. It looks awful. Um, and so what I've done is I've changed it. So if, if you were originally before a legendary creature with the subtype of hero, you are now just a legendary hero, and then all your other subtypes. So legendary creature, human hero, is now legendary hero, human. Uh, and the same thing happens with villain. Now, Avengers is a, Avengers a little bit different. So if it's legendary Avenger, that means you are a legendary creature with the subtype of both hero and Avenger. So if a card references heroes and you are an Avenger, you count as a hero. Now, there are a couple other things to note. Um, the, the I did a new thing with frames for Avengers. And you'll see that here in a second. And also, Avengers only have the Avenger tag in Avengers movies. So, for instance, Iron Man from Captain America Civil War was not considered an Avenger because it wasn't an Avengers movie. And this is done mostly for balancing reasons because there are some cards that specifically state that Avengers have to do something. And I just think it's easier to just say, hey, you're an Avenger only during an Avenger movie. Um, but yeah. Uh, the villains are typically in the colors of red, blue, and black, and the heroes are typically in the colors of red, blue, and sorry, red, blue, and white with the occasional green. There'll be more green in this set because guardians add green in their heroes. But yeah, I've talked now for three minutes just about the basis of the set. Um, so why don't we just jump right into the first card? And let's talk about the protagonist of the story and not that he's the good guy, but just he's kind of the main character. Uh, and you'll notice this is a flip card and it's actually the first planeswalker in the set, but you'll we'll see that. Uh, here in a second. So Thanos Mad Titan is a Wooburg legendary villain titan, so legendary creature titan villain, to a trample, he's a 6-6, six, six, and he says whenever he attacks, put a victory counter on up to three target enchantments you control, which you'll see here in a second why that's so important. And whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you may search that your library for a legendary enchantment and put it onto the battlefield under your control. Then whenever he Thanos Mad Titan is equipped by an artifact. If its name is Infinity Gauntlet, to transform him into Thanos Infinity Bearer and put six loyalty counters on it. So when he's equipped with the Infinity Gauntlet, which we again we will talk about here in a second, he gets transformed into Thanos Infinity Bearer, who will start with six loyalty counters. And he has four loyalty abilities. Now, Planeswalkers. I've gotten a lot of requests to do Planeswalkers in the in my set, Magic the Marveling, and I thought about it. What makes sense? Is it someone who travels between planets? You know, a, tra a planet walker? Um, or, you know, what can I do? Now, I don't want there to be a lot of planeswalkers. Planeswalkers are hard to design. They're just, mm, they're very meh in my opinion. So what I've done is I've made it so that all planeswalkers will be pl people who have wielded the Infinity Gauntlet. That means in Endgame, characters like Iron Man and the Hulk will have planeswalker variants because they both wielded the Infinity Gauntlet. That way, I can have a couple planeswalkers, but not too many. 
Now, here, Thanos becomes Thanos, legendary, Th Thanos Infinity Bear, legendary Planeswalker, Thanos. Uh, and he starts with six loyalty. Now, you can plus three, and he deals damage equal to the number of loyalty counters on it to up to three target creatures, so he can kind of just decimate something. Now, at this point, he has the Infinity Gauntlet, which I'm going to tell you right now is very hard to get. He has a plus two that says draw X cards, where X is half the number of loyalty counters on Thanos Infinity Bearer, which, by the way, the plus two happens first. So, if you just flip him and plus two him, he'll be at eight loyalty counters, you'll draw four cards. Then he has zero, and he says, equip all stones and cards named Infinity Gauntlet to Thanos Infinity Bearer. Um, until your next turn, you may not activate Thanos' ability. So you can attach all stones and cards named Infinity Gauntlet, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then he has a minus seven. For each opponent, separate each permanent that player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all of the permanents in one of the piles at random. Uh, I did want to make this ultimate feel like a snap, but I also didn't want it to be something that was never going to be used by because it makes you sack half your permanent. So I know it's not equally balanced, but the idea here is Thanos can you know decimate you. He gains his knowledge. He gets all of the stones, and then he's going to snap. And that's kind of what Thanos does. And, you know, it may seem like, oh, that's kind of meh, but why don't we look at the rest of the Infinity Gauntlet and Stones? So we have Infinity Gauntlet Incomplete and Infinity Gauntlet. So Infinity Gauntlet Incomplete is a legendary artifact equipment, and whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a victory counter on it. Again, with these victory counters, and you'll see what they are doing in a second. But whenever, when an equipped creature is equipped with six stones with different names, stones being a, a, an artifact type, transform Infinity Gauntlet Incomplete into Infinity Gauntlet. So this just is a like nice little passive ability. You actually can't equip the equipment, which is kind of funny. But then we have Infinity Gauntlet. Equipped creature or planeswalker has indestructible and protection from everything. Whenever equipped creature or planeswalker activates an ability or attacks, draw a card. So if you equip this to a planeswalker, um, you get to draw a card every time they activate a loyalty ability. And then you can pay to and attach Infinity Gauntlet to target creature or planeswalker. I know, artifact and equipment never really attach to planeswalkers, but for the purpose of, you know, this, they are going to. Part of one of the reasons I don't like planeswalkers, but you know what? I think it's interesting. Now, indestructible and protection from everything really just gives your planeswalkers hexproof. Uh, they can't be destroyed by kill spells, but they can still be destroyed by being attacked. Um, but yeah, you'll see now the stones. So the stones all come in the cycle. So for each stone, there's a journey that is a legendary enchantment, which is why there's victory counters and Thanos searches for, you know, legendary enchantments. And then it transforms into a stone that, and the stone has an ability if it's attached to a planeswalker and an ability if it's attached to a creature, and then you can attach it. So let's break down journey of power and then the rest of them will kind of go through a little bit quicker. So journey of power, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, put a victory counter on journey of power. Whenever, when it has four or more victory counters on it, transform it. So you have to deal combat damage to a player um, four times, and it can't just be, um, it, you have to either be like three different opponents, but if you see it's one or more creatures, which means that it has to be different instances, and like, it, it takes a while to flip. But with like Thanos and Infinity Gauntlet, this may get victory counters in other ways, you could proliferate them, lots of things. But when it's transformed, it says as long as it's attached to a Planeswalker, whenever you activate an ability of the attached Planeswalkers, you may put two loyalty counters on it, which a lot of his abilities care about how many loyalty counters he has on him, so that's awesome. And then as long as Power Stone is attached to a creature, that creature gets plus five, plus oh, and has first strike so just big boost to a creature and then you can attach it for two and it's, the reason it's like this is first so it can be attached to a planeswalker and second so that you can do it at instant speed next we have journey of space so this one is whenever a creature an opponent control dies but you have to get six of those to happen to transform it and then space stone says as long as space stone is attached to a planeswalker you may cast spells anytime you could cast an instant so it's kind of a vadalk and ori effect but it doesn't actually affect the planeswalker and as long as it's attached to a creature you play if the top card of your library revealed you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library so just you either get like a future sight effect or a vadalk and ori effect and you can kind of switch that at any time you can pay two to a attach it and switch it around. Very awesome. Uh, Journey of Reality is whenever you gain control of a permanent you don't own, which is part of actually Black Red's, um, you know, entire theme theme within the set. And if you do that three or more times, you can transform it. And when it's transformed, um, whenever a creature attacks equipped Planeswalker, that player's controller loses four life, so it makes it hard to attack. And then if it's equipped to a creature, that creature has tapped target player sacrifices a non-land permanent of your choice. So tap, destroy something, and it gets around hexproof and indestructible. Um, very, very powerful, very hard to flip. 
Journey of Soul, whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a soul count, victory counter on it, and whenever it has five or more victory counters on it, transform it, and it's, if it's equipped to a Planeswalker, you may activate that Planeswalker's loyalty abilities in an extra time each turn. Very powerful. That's why his zero says you can't activate abilities of Thanos until your next turn, that way you can't just equip all your stuff and then get an extra ability. Um, and then as long as Stolestone is equipped to a creature, that creature has first strike, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may look at that player's hand, you may choose a card that exile the chosen card, and you may cast it as long as it remains exiled so if you attach it to a creature you can kind of steal your opponent's cards from hand uh and if it's attached to a planeswalker you get to activate their abilities multiple times journey of time whenever a creature an opponent controls would die you may instead regenerate it and put three plus one plus one counters on it if you do put a victory counter on it so you have to spare your opponent which is kind of what thanos does with iron man and whenever you do that four or more times transform uh, journey of time into time stone and as long as time stone is attached to a planeswalker you may activate its loyalty abilities at instant speed so if you have time and soul stone you get to activate his abilities twice um twice per turn and at instant speed uh, so you could do it on every player's turn. And as long as Time Stone is attached to a creature, um, prevent all damage that would be dealt to that creature, and it has pay one, remove this creature from combat, so it's kind of just like a reversal thing. It's much more powerful on a Planeswalker. And we have Journey of Mind. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, put a victory counter on it, so even your opponent's artifacts. Whenever it has five or more victory counters on it, transform it. And then if it's a Planeswalker, if it's attached to a Planeswalker, you may look at the top card of each player's library and eight each player's hand at any time, so you just kind of know everything. And if it's attached to a creature, that creature gets plus five, plus oh, plus five, and has Hexproof and Vigilance. So this one's really good to have uh, because you can swap it around at instant speed. Now, that is the journey and mind cycle, um, and those, you know, it is very hard to get all of the stones, and that's what you have to do. You have to complete all of the journeys, and then... You get um you get all of the stones and the the infinity gauntlet and Thanos in order to get his planeswalker version. So that's and then think about Thanos with all of these equipped to him, he becomes very very powerful. You're drawing tons of cards. He is basically invincible, and you have so many abilities. But the ability to do that would be very difficult, and what I would be considered jank. So yes, it is very very janky. But there are definitely ways you could do it, and it's kind of this fun like mini game that your deck is trying to do. Now, we are finally moving away from Thanos, and we're 13 minutes into this video. Um, this is probably going to be broken up into two parts, but here's the new frame for Avengers. So all Avengers, including past Avengers, so if they have the Avenger type, will now be borderless and have their art from their individual posters. So this is Iron Man's art from his poster. Now, he is red, green, white, blue. That way he can be the commander of a four-color um of hero deck and he says uh legendary avenger human scientist 4-4 with flying and vigilance and when heroes you control are avengers in addition to the other type so it turns he turns heroes into avengers whenever another hero avenger enters the battlefield you may remove a counter from target permanent which will reduce victory counters um but also you can pay three and put one of the following counters that iron man mark 50 doesn't have on it on it so you basically you choose one first strike death touch hexproof lifelink menace trample or plus one plus one and he gets that type of counter on him um and it can't he can't get multiple of those but yeah um if you don't for instance want him to have hex proof you can kind of remove counters he is kind of narrow but his main aspect of wanting to be a commander is the fact that he turns heroes into avengers now we kind of see two sides iron man that leaves earth and captain america who stays on earth and i've kind of broken them up um they're both captain america and uh, iron man are both good leaders for hero-based commander decks, but we'll get into Captain America soon. We have Spider-Man, Avenger. Every uh, uh, new Avenger kind of gets a comma Avenger card, but he's a four-cost blue and red, 3-3 three, three with reach, and at the beginning of combat on an opponent's turn, if Spider-Man, Avenger, and at least two other heroes you control are untapped, you may tap target creature. So the Avengers have a theme in this set of defending, because that's what they do. They are not on the offense. They are defending against Thanos, and Thanos and his kind of crew and cards are really all about attacking and being offensive. So the, he here can block flyers, and if you are saving your creatures to block, Spider-Man can start tapping down your opponent's creatures so that they don't get to attack. So yeah, very powerful card, and just it's part of the whole untapping theme, or sorry, the whole defending theme. 
Similarly, we have Doctor Strange Future Seer, who's a blue, a red, and a white for a legendary hero human wizard 2-3 with first strike and flying, and whenever he attacks, each player reveals a card from their hand at random. Uh, whenever a player reveals a card, you may pay three if you do that player exiles that card. So uh, th that bottom ability is actually really interesting, and I designed this to be a cool commander. Whenever a player reveals a card, so if you make them reveal their hand and you pay three, you can make them exile a specific card. If you make someone reveal the top 10 cards of their library, for each card you can pay three mana and exile exile it. Um, and so if any effect tells someone to reveal, you can see be like, no, 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 exile that. Uh, so I think that's really interesting and is kind of the whole, I'm seeing the future. No, 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 you know, like change it. So yeah, very interesting. Next, we have Star-Lord Ragefield, 6-cost red legendary hero human guardian, 4-5 with trample. And whenever he or another uh, guardian, he... Whenever another hero or guardian enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay a green or a white, giving him, you know, green, white, red. If you do, that creature deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to its power. If the targeted permanent is a creature, it can't attack or block until your next turn. If the targeted permanent is a planeswalker, it can't have its abilities activated until your next turn. So he's going to get really mad and punch something and kind of, in this case, actually help you, but it is kind of just him, you know, getting very angry, punching, uh, and we see that in the film. So yeah, next we have Gamora. Also, he does kind of help the whole not attacking theme by having him make them not be able to attack. Gamora, daughter of Thanos, three cost green legendary hero, Ze uh, yeah, that guardian, and whenever it enters the battlefield, create a unit token, it's a 3-3, three, three, and when it, you can tap and sacrifice it, and if you control a villain, you may transform target enchantment you control of Abel. If you control a hero, transform target artifact of Abel. So, if you have Gamora, you can be Star-Lord and sacrifice Gamora to basically not let him have access to a stone by turning someone's artifact back into a journey, or if you're Thanos, you can sacrifice Gamora in order to turn your enchantment into an artifact. So, it's very interesting. Are you Peter Quill in this situation, or are you Thanos? And depending on which kind of deck you're playing, this has a different use, and I think it's very interesting. Next, we have Mantis Mind Delver, 4 cost, white, legendary hero guardian, 3-4, and when it attacks, tap target creature or artifact, it doesn't untap as long as Mantis is tapped, so you kind of tap it down as long as Mantis stays tapped, so if you have a way to make Mantis stay tapped, you can kind of make that card stay tapped, so it's definitely an interesting little thing that you could build around, and it still adds to the whole defense thing. Drax, Titan Warrior, 5 costs, uh, red, green, 2-2, two, two, legendary hero guardian, and he must attack if each combat a fable, but whenever he attacks, exile the top card of your library. If it's a spell with converter mana cost less than or equal to Drax's power, you may cast it this turn without paying its mana cost. So, free casting, he's going to kind of blindly go into combat, but you're going to get a little bit of a reward out of that. Next, we have Nebula, Daughter of Thanos, 9 cost blue legendary artifact creature Lufamoid, 2-2, two, two, and it costs 1 less to cast for each card in opponent's hand, so this can very quickly be a cheap spell. And whenever an opponent draws a card other than the first card they would draw during their draw step, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and it's a 2-2. Two, two. So very, very simple, um, and it, but it's oftentimes going to be like a 1-drop 2-2 two, two that may get bigger. So keep that in mind. This is actually a crazy powerful card and would be interesting as a commander. Think about it. Turn 1, Nebula, um, and now if anyone's drawing cards, you're getting a really big commander. I think this could be a little powerful, but I think it's interesting. Next, we have Cap Earth Defender. So again, the other, you know, option. This is a legendary Avenger Enhanced Human 2-6 with Defender in Reach. And whenever a creature you attacks you, each Avenger you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So he is much more about being on the defense. Um... Versus Iron Man, who has all those counters that help him attack, and he says, pay one, cap, Earth Defender gains either indestructible vigilance or this creature can attack as though it didn't have Defender until end of turn, activate this ability only if you control three or more Avengers. So if he's with his uh, buddies, he can go out and attack, and he can gain indestructible, and he can gain vigilance. So he's definitely being, you know, a defender in the Battle of Wakanda here, uh, and he just is an alternate way, you know. Uh, Tony Stark is clearly trying to make other people Avengers. Cap is just wanting to be with his Avengers. And obviously, if they're in the same deck, that's great. Next, we have Bruce Banner, Crushed by Failure, a white and a blue for Legendary Avenger Human Scientist 1-1, one, one, and it says equip abilities that target Bruce Banner cost two less to activate because he does go into the Hulkbuster suit, and you can pay two, and he becomes, he gains indestructible until end of turn, activate this ability only if Bruce Banner is equipped by something, so he kind of just wants to be equipped, which is a new aspect for Bruce Banner, but also it's his first time being in, like, the Hulkbuster armor. 
Next, we have Falcon Avenger. It's a three-cost red and white legendary Avenger human, 3-3 with flying and menace because he has two wings. And he can block an additional com uh, creature each combat because, you know, two wings. And whenever he's blocked, exile the top card of your library. You may cast that card as long as it remains exiled. Anytime you can cast an instant, as long as you are attacking or being attacked. So just whether you're... So you can kind of cast the spells during combat or and that's it and that's kind of an interesting thought because he you know he used to be in the military yada yada um this whole movie is called infinity war i think it makes a lot of sense next we have vision stonekeeper four cost blue and red legendary artifact avenger android four three with flying and worthy and you can pay one and he phases out because you know he phases and whenever he dies each opponent puts either three plus one plus one counters on a creature they control or three victory counters on an enchantment they control so Yes, he's very hard to kill, but if you do manage to kill him, because, you know, he's hard to kill because he can phase out, you do get a little bit of a bonus, whether you're being Thanos and needing victory counters, or you just want plus one, plus one counters. Next we have War Machine Recovered, one red and a white for a legendary Avenger human flying, and as long as an opponent, this doesn't have power and toughness, uh, a three cost, uh, 3-3 three, three with flying, and as long as an opponent controls more creatures than you, it has vigilance. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile target enchantment that player controls. So just, yeah, not not bad. Um, he is going to, you know, if your opponent is doing better than you, he'll be able to both block and attack. And you're able to, you know, kind of use him to get rid of your opponent's journeys. Very, very good card. Next, we have Black Widow Infinity Warrior, 4 cons, Blue Legendary Avenger, Human Spy, 3-3 three, three with Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, target creature loses all abilities until end of turn and can't attack, so you can kind of just be like Thanos, haha, you lose all abilities. Very simple card, but very powerful. Next, we have Scarlet Witch Avenger, 6 cost, Blue Legendary Avenger, Enhanced Human, 4-5 with Hexproof, and you can pay 1 in a blue and return a hero you control to its owner's hand, and Scarlet Witch Avenger can't be blocked, so you're going to kind of protect Vision, um, and that's also going to help Wanda not be attacked, but it's also kind of a cost, so it's interesting, uh, because, you know, is returning a cost? Sometimes. Is it uh, the benefit? Sometimes. Then you can pay four and tap, and target creature you control phases out, or phase, or target phased out creature you control phases in. So you can phase back in vision if you want, or you can phase out something if you want as well. So just very interesting and versatile card, and she has hexproof, which means it's hard to get rid of her. Uh, and yeah, pretty cool. Next we have Okoye, War Defender, 4 cost, red and white, legendary hero, human warrior, 1-5, and whenever a creature attacks you, if you are the monarch, you may pay red or white, red or white. If you do untap target creature you control, that creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and has first strike. So uh, you can basically say, hey, I'm going to let something that already attacked now defend, and whenever it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Just more, you know, Black Panther had the theme of the monarch, characters from Black Panther are more likely to care about it. Next, we have Shuri Stone Extractor. It's a 5-cost blue and red legendary hero human scientist 4-4, four, four. and whenever it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a non-token artifact. If you do, create a scrap token and a 3-3 colorless android artifact creature token, so she's kind of separating the stone and the android. That's kind of his her, her goal. That's kind of the point there. And it gets plus 1, plus 1 for each artifact, creature, and an innovation you control. Innovations were introduced with Black Panther, uh, so she cares about it more here as well. And artifact creatures obviously referencing her working with Vision. Next, we have Black Panther War Leader, 5 cost, red and white, legendary hero, enhanced human, noble, 3-3, three, three, first strike, and as long as it's your turn, creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0, oh, and have vigilance, and as long as it's not your turn, creatures you control have plus 0, oh, plus 2, and have first strike. So just, they're going to be able to attack, and it's going to be strong, and then they're going to be also be able to block, and when they block, they're going to be able to block better. She, he is definitely the War Leader, and this is a very powerful card when you think about the goals of both sides of this uh, Avengers versus Thanos War. Next, we have Thor as Guardian Survivor, who does not cost any mana. It's a legendary Avenger as Guardian God Noble 4-4 four, four, with flying and suspend. That's because, he, you know, he kind of shows up at the last minute, but when he does, he's very powerful. When he enters the battlefield, create a storm, Stormbreaker token attached to it, so that's just Stormbreaker, the card, but a token of it. Um, this is, you know... Yeah, and we'll talk about that a little later. As long as Thor as Guardian Survivor is equipped, it has first strike and tap Thor as Guardian Survivor fights target attacking creature. So just boom, he can decimate a, an attacking creature. Just very, very good card. And in, the interesting part is that he only has suspend. 
Next, we have Loki Stone Stealer, two cost blue legendary hero, Ice Guardian God with phasing, because you know he kind of is hard to kill. Is kind of hard to kill. Three three, and when he enters the battlefield, choose target artifact or creature you control. As long as you control Loki, the chosen permanent has phasing, so you can kind of just take, hey, Loki's here. Something else is gonna phase out with Loki, so you can be your opponent's creature, it can be your creatures, it can be a lot of different things. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting card. He slips in and out. You're not sure what side he's on. Uh, all that interesting, you know, phasing nonsense, and I think Loki really embodies phasing well. Next, we have Rocket Weapon Master, red and a green for a legendary hero, half world or guardian, 2 2. And as long as it's your turn, he has flying. You know, he has a jetpack, but he doesn't use it often, so just on your turn. And he deals combat damage. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player or blocks a creature, you may sacrifice a non token artifact you control. If you do, draw a card and create a scrap token. So. He's being encouraged to both attack and block, and if you do, you can start sacking non-token artifacts, which, you know, Rocket and the Guardians like to do, and you get to create scrap tokens and draw cards. Just overall awesome, and it's really what you want to see. Next, we have Groot Rambunctious Fighter, one green green for legendary hero guardian 1-1, one, one, and whenever a creature attacks you, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Groot, so just he's gonna get really big really fast and you can remove a plus one plus one counter from it and target attacking creature gets minus one minus oh so you can kind of just give all attacking creatures minus one minus oh um or you can make group become really big it just makes combat much more difficult for your opponent Next, we have Corvus Glaive. It's a 5-cost white legendary villain minion with vigilance, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Corvus Glaive, and then you can pay 2 and a white and exile target creature or artifact, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step, so he cares about his Glaive all and all that, and you'll notice he's 2 white, white, white. Um, Thanos is Wooberg, which means that characters that relate to him can be in all colors. Um, he, Corvus Glaive is actually part of a cycle with the rest of the Black Order, so Ebony Maw is two blue, blue, blue for a legendary villain minion, 1-6 with flying, and whenever he is blocked or blocks, you may draw a card, so just, you know, very powerful there. And you can pay one blue and sacrifice an artifact and tap target creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the sacrificed artifact's converted mana cost. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So he's kind of, you know, trapping you in the terrain of the artifacts. And he's shown to do that a lot in the movie. And he's also just this very big thinker. Makes sense that he's in blue. He's a telepath. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I like the card design. Next, we have Colobsidian. He's a 5-cost black legendary villain minion with menace, and whenever he is dealt damage, each opponent that uh, loses that much life and you gain that much life. So just, you know, if you hit him, you're going to lose a lot of life, and he can, and then you can pay for and he must be blocked. So if your opponent doesn't have a 5-5, five, five, or even if they do, you can say, ha, huh, you have to block, and now if they block with like a 1-1, one, one, they're just going to lose life on top of it, or you can make them block with maybe their huge creature, like a 25-25, and then boom, they just die. And it has menace, so you have to block with at least two creatures so yeah very 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 good card and i think it fits perfectly with call obsidians just i'm gonna run at you and just hit you even if you're trying to block me next we have proxima midnight who is the red version it's a 6-2 legendary villain minion with first strike which is powerful and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you may attach target equipment to proxima midnight even your opponent's equipment and then you can pay one in a red and tap and it fights target creature you don't control but that is very risky because first strike doesn't apply in combat or in fights Next, we have Infinity Snap. It's a Wooberg legendary instant, and it says for each opponent, randomly separate each non land permanent that player controls into two piles. Each opponent sacrifices one pile at random. So, just yeah, you do have to have a legendary creature, but I figured this effect is so powerful, it should probably be represented on a bunch of cards. We have Soul World, which is a 5 cost blue and uh, white legendary enchantment flash, and when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of creatures. When it leaves the battlefield, return all creatures exiled with Soul World to the battlefield under their owner's control, and at the beginning of each end step, sacrifice Soul World. So this is part of the whole, like, world's kind of cycle, I would say, in the Magic and Marveling, where it enters the battlefield, does something, and then at your end step, is sacrificed, and then it does something when it leaves. But it's also an enchantment. It's very similar to, like, Underworld Breach from Magic. Next, we have the Battle of Wakanda and the Quest for the Stone. So, sagas are a perfect way in Magic the Marveling to tell stories because that's what they're intended for. So, Battle of Wakanda, create three zero three human creature tokens with Defender, so be able to block. Until your next turn, each creature has this creature must attack each combat fable, but since your creatures have Defender, the three you created, you'll still have some blockers for your opponent's attack. Um, 
and then you can pay three and destroy all creature tokens so that can destroy your army your opponent's army but you're also going to lose your three zero threes so just kind of war you're going to lose creatures your opponent's going to lose creatures you are going to be fighting and then the quest for the stones, three blue and a white for a uh, enchantment saga. It says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a lore counter from the quest for the stones. And then his first thing is another target permanent you control gains indestructible until end of turn. So you're going to play that and that's going to happen. Then, you can pay two and put a victory counter on up to one target enchantment. And then you can return all non-titan creatures to their owner's hands. And the idea here is that if you can... You know, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. So if you if you are able to keep hitting your opponent, maybe you can keep doing the second stage, right? So if you manage to hit your opponent with one creature while you're on the second, you have two loyalty counters or two sorry two lore counters and quest for the stones. It jumps back down to one, and then that means next turn you get to put another victory counter. And so it's this kind of game where you kind of get to manipulate the lore counters, so maybe it doesn't go away so quickly. And it's a game of strategy, and I really like the design of that. Next, we have the end of the video. Now, this has been the longest Magic the Marveling video I've ever done. I know at the beginning I said, I'm probably going to split this up, but I figured, you know what? You are here to see Magic the Marveling and Infinity War. There it is. That's the, one of the most epic movies in MCU history, and actually probably all of uh, Marvel and movie history, actually. Uh, and I, th I hope I, you know portrayed it well of course there are a ton more cards that i didn't get to talk about and i'm sure a lot of them are scrolling by the screen right now but yeah uh check those out also leave your opinions on the cards in the comments down below um also if you saw any errors in the cards um i would first by the way check the website because the most updated version of the cards are on the website uh in case i catch something um, yeah, and yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a long way in the making, and of course, Avengers Endgame is just around the corner. We got um, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel coming up. And then Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home, and we will have officially done every Marvel movie, and I will continue to do this series with the release of things like Black Widow. Either way, guys, if you enjoyed, hit that like button. Again, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Did I miss something? Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.